first thing I'd like to do is, is change your paradigm, change the way you think. Because all of us grew up in uh, this world here, this Western world, where we were taught that there are things called diseases and that we catch them or they get into us somehow. Humans are uh, a part of nature. The problem is we don't know that anymore. Nature operates under certain laws. For example, me and an elephant step out of a window. At the same time, we both hit the ground at the same time. We will have fallen at 32 feet per second squared. So we are subject to the laws of nature. So I cannot want to be part of nature. I cannot think I'm part of nature. I cannot know it, but I am. In fact, everything that exists is the, exists to perform a function in this whole thing called nature. And this whole thing called nature is absolutely perfect. In fact, what we call biodegradable means that it, it gets turned back into, it's recycled. There's no waste. It's an absolutely perfect system. And whether we know it or want to believe it, we're part of it. Nature uh, has three imperatives, divine imperatives. Regenerate, rejuvenate, and procreate. And that's what they do. You pick an apple from the tree, next year there's three in that spot. You pull the weeds up and they're back. You cut your hand, it heals. That's the nature of nature. That's what nature does. Always. And within each individual organism, who, which, has its function in the niche out of which it arose. And you take it out of that niche, it has problems. You put a polar bear on the equator, it has problems. So every organism can achieve its optimal functioning within the niche out of which it arose for which it has that function. And by the way, because every organism is either, interestingly enough, food, it is a food, and it is also a consumer. So everything exists within a context and has its function. In fact, the definition of health is optimal functioning of the organism. Health is not the absence of disease, it's not the absence of anything. It's the presence of something. It's the presence of the ability to regenerate, rejuvenate, and procreate. We've named the process, and we call it homeostasis. And homeostasis is the way in which we maintain balance. Now that we have that reminder, we can, realize, we can start to understand the myth of the disease model. Okay? If my blood pressure is up, and I go to a doctor, he's going to tell me I have a disease that you'll all agree is a disease. It's called hypertension or high blood pressure. And the doctor will give me a magic potion, a pill. The potion has now changed to pharmaceutical retail pharmacies, and I buy this pill, and it lowers my blood pressure. We've taken care of the problem, right? We haven't even identified the problem. What is the problem? Was the problem the high blood pressure? Well, no. If we remember that the body does only that which is perfect, because it's nature, nature functions under the law of necessity. It's always doing what's necessary. Everything that happens in nature happens out of necessity. Water rolls downhill. Everything that happens, happens because it had to happen. Okay? So, my blood pressure is up. The doctor should have said to me, you have elevated blood pressure. So the question is, why do I have high blood pressure? Well, I've been eating cheeseburgers and french fries and pizzas, and my arteries are a little blocked up, and so my body, with its wisdom, knows that in order to maintain functional integrity and to get the blood to every cell in the body, it has to increase the pressure. That's just the, the law of physics. It has to get there. So the problem wasn't the blood pressure. That was the life-saving homeostatic process. The problem was the reason why it happened. So you go on a fast, a cleanse, you change it out, you do colonics, you do meditation. All of a sudden, your, uh, your arteries are flexible, and the blood pressure doesn't go up. It doesn't need to go up. It only operates under necessity. So what we would call a disease was really a homeostatic corrective measure. Same thing with diabetes. Body becomes insulin resistant because we're putting too much sugar. Sugar can kill. It's glue. It kills. Produces acid. A cancer. Okay? We think cancer is a bad thing. It's not. It's a life-saving thing. Okay? Cancer is when all the, little or, the, all the little mitochondria in the cell, the, 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 the parts of the cell that use, take uh, oxygen and uh, sugar, glucose, and produce high output of e ATP, which is energy, okay? 36 APT, ATP for every molecule of glucose. That's pretty good yield. Okay? So that's how energy comes about. When enough mitochondria are killed, and they are killed easily because they're the most vulnerable part of the cell, then the cell goes into a fail-safe mode of energy production called aerobic glycolysis or fermentation. The cell begins to ferment. We all ferment. If I run to the corner, my legs will be sore. Why? Because I'm producing lactic acid because I've exceeded my aerobic capacity. 
Okay, so I'm producing lactic acid. I stop and go, <laughs> blow off the CO2, balance my, uh, my acid again, I'm okay. Cancer cells can't do that. They've lost their mitochondria. So if you didn't have, if the cell didn't turn into a malignant cell, then uh, that little lump in your breast would have turned black and be would have become necrotic and the person would have died of sep sepsis. The same with the prostate, lungs, anywhere in the body. The cancer is a life-saving, corrective, homeostatic process at that moment. Okay? The problem with cancer is, is that it, 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 uh, it, it, it's ma trying to maintain balance in a situation where it can't. And, and the, the cost is functional integrity of the body will be lost and you'll be dead. Same with bl blood pressure you'll eventually have a stroke sooner than you would if you didn't have it. Again, corrective measures. And so the answer is always to correct the reason why the body had to do that. By the way, so cancer, let's talk about cancer. And I, ha I, I, I have to tell you, this sounds like an odd statement, but I love cancer. And the reason I love cancer is there's only one reason. It's because the people that get it stop negotiating. Any other condition that a person has, they're going to say, but can't I just? What about, uh, can I, right? Cancer, they go, okay, stand on my head for three hours, okay, from two, to, from two to four, okay. So that's the thing about cancer, that's the beauty of it. And what happens when you stop negotiating? You now have surrendered. What have you surrendered, to cancer? No, you've surrendered to the way it is. And what is the way it is? The way it is, the way life is, is the way it is. If it's raining outside, I can be melancholy, I can be pissed, I can be happy, but it's still raining. And by surrendering to it means you're not trying to change it. When you stop trying to change it, you, are then, uh, you can then uh, uh, be present for it and get everything you need to get out of it. Because it turns out that the world's perfect. So our lives are blasphemous. We live in blasphemy. We are telling the creation, the, the universe, that we can do it better. And the consequence is that we're on the verge of not only annihilating ourselves, but everyone else, everything else. So, anyway, all of these conditions are a consequence. You don't see cancer in wild animals who never, ever had poisons. They don't have heart attacks. They don't have strokes. They don't have any of these diseases. Because their homeostatic corrective responses are with minor things, not with major, bizarre things. Okay. So, what's the clear and obvious answer when you, have this when you have this realization? Get back to nature. Get back to what your body needs to be doing. And what will it do? You don't think your body's working? Cut it and it'll heal.